Lady um, Marion. <laughs> That's me. I'm the lady. I'm the lady <laughs> farmer. No, what was what was the name you were calling me before? The lady boss farmer. Lady boss farmer. <laughs> <laughs> what is important for the chefs who are your customers? Uh, for them, the organic label is not that important. So that's good because we don't have it because our vegetables don't touch the soil. They want super fresh vegetables that last for long in the kitchen. Like our vegetables can last for two weeks and they're very happy and surprised about it. It's because it's super fresh. It's not because it's hydroponic. And they want it to be good looking and they're happy because they don't have to clean them. You know, like the lettuce, you have no soil in it. It's just perfect. Just cut it and eat it like this. You don't have to wash it. And they also, I think they also like us because we're friendly, because we go there and we give them some gifts and we speak to them and we try to know every week what what they're expecting from us. So we work together and it's not like we have this product. Do you want it? Yes, no, blah. It's what do you want? How can I help you? Hmm. So we only work with chefs and we have only 25 chefs and. Um, and the idea of having that few chefs is to be able to respond to their expectations one mm. by one because each one of them wants something different. Mm. Okay, but you can handle it. It's challenging, <laughs> but I like it because sometimes they invite me for lunch. Uh -huh. <laughs> <laughs> like that. The, mar the market research, did you, how much time did you put, spend on it? And uh, two to three months. Each two months. Week. And you just, was that a full-time job or mm. you just went to talk to all chefs and... No, we were building the systems at the same time. Okay. But I, I didn't only sell the chefs, you know. I went to the farmer's market and I went to the supermarket and I went every, everywhere what was related to food. So okay. I even went to Paris to the place where all, you know, the planes, they arrive with containers of food and herbs, you know. Really? Yeah. There is this huge market in Paris called Gérangis. And you have all the vegetables that comes into our country. They, it arrives here. It's whole, whole, whole sale. Okay. And, it, and it was very interesting, you know. So basically, you did your market research very, very, very thoroughly. Yeah. <laughs> you need to know what, where you're getting it. And then there are some tricks and some things that you need to know. You need uh, to understand. I've been in the neighborhood. The local community is not so big. <laughs> <laughs> local community. Well, what can we say? <laughs> Now, we are in the middle of nowhere, is that is your question. <laughs> now, eight people per, meter, per kilometer square. Wow. And, but you, you engage with them, you know, and did, how do you engage yes. with them? Uh... Actually, we were kind of scared because I've always lived in cities and I was like, oh, maybe if we go to the countryside, people will reject us because we're not from the countryside, because we're not from here, because even when we speak French, we don't have the same accent as they do. But because we were doing something that had to do with agriculture, it was very easy to fit in, uh. like very easy. Because they're, they're like, oh, you work hard, you're in agriculture, it's okay. <laughs> okay. And then some of them were curious, so we did a free guided visit for the local people, so they could go in the greenhouse. And then sometimes we give them some gifts, some tomatoes. Uh. Uh. That's what so like. always works. <laughs> what are your, uh, you know, I already know a little bit about your marketing tools. But can you say more about your marketing tools? Marketing tools, well, I just use my, myself as an example of what I like to see and I just produce what I like to see. So, for instance, I, I work a lot on social media because I'm a big consumer of social media. So we are on Instagram, Facebook, YouTube, Twitter. And we have obviously a website and a blog. <laughs> 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 and, um, and I... I I try to share our day-to-day -day life. Hmm. So I take pictures of us in the greenhouse, of the cats in the greenhouse, of the plants, of the insects, and of the chefs, of the delivery. And something very easy, you know, light, especially on Facebook. When I go to Facebook, you know, I hate it because it was not like this before, but now you go and it's like political debate and, and the war and blah, 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 and everyone is depressed and it's just giving their anger on Facebook and I hate it. I don't want to see this when I go on Facebook. I just want to chill. If I go there, it's because I have just five minutes to chill. And I'm like, Ugh. And then I see a plant and I'm like, Ugh. you know, and I see something positive and I'm like, Ugh. So I try to do something that's very, very light and very mm. green and very fresh. So people that are depressed, they're like, oh, that's nice. Mm. And, um, and I do some tutorials so people learn with me as I, as I learn. And, uh, 
tutorials of what? Uh, of YouTube and in YouTube, I don't know. For instance, how to collect seeds from tomatoes, so you can oh, reuse yeah. it next year. Seen some um, of them. Uh, yeah, I have many tutorials. Mm. I have so many. Well, now you have to say subscribe. Subscribe to my YouTube channel. <laughs> it's very important. We have a big community, and I share a lot of content for free, so you don't even have to come to our course. Just subscribe if you like it. And then come to the course. And then come to the course. <laughs> <laughs> how much time do you spend on the? On the social media and the marketing Ooh, compared, compared to farming? I, 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 I spend way too much time because I like to put quality content. So, you know, I take, I take the, for Instagram, I take the picture with my good camera and then I pass it to my phone and then I, and then I like to put a joke in the text. I, I like it to be very, very me, very personal. Mm -hmm. So in English you don't have this, but in French you have two ways of addressing to a person. It's tu ou vous. Tu when it's very personal and vous if it's like a, Oh, I'm a company and you're the other one, all oh, your, well. So I always say two and I have a special way of communicating with them. And, uh, and I answer all of my comments and all of the questions. So I spend a lot of time doing that. But I, I really enjoy it. For me, it's like, uh, it's not working. Mm -hmm. it's, I do it in my relaxed time. So after I come back from the greenhouse and return, I just sit down and I'm like, do, 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 do. <laughs> So, <laughs> and it drives Nicolas crazy, but, but it's okay. He let me. Because we met so many cool people like this, you know. and mm. we have some followers from the beginning, and we have special relationship with them. And when I did the Hydroponic World Tour, you know, so many people they hosted me because they had seen me on YouTube, mm. and I didn't knew them. Opens doors. It's like in two weeks, I'm rec receiving here this um, American lady, aquaponist. She's a genius, and she works in aquaponic culture in Tucson, Arizona. And she saw my video, and she was like, "Come into my home. I run a aquaponic uh, um, group thing." And uh, so I went there and she hosted me in her home and she took a whole week with nothing, just us. And she took us everywhere and we met some geniuses and we gave a talk in the university and it was amazing. Mm. And now she's giving a talk in Scotland and she's coming to France so she can see us. And all of this started because she saw a YouTube video. Mm. So sharing knowledge, open doors. Fantastic. That's it's fantastic. I love, I, I love this world we're living in and we have to take advantage of it because mm. it's great. Partners. You know, I know you're, let's start with the Association for Vertical Farming. Thank you yeah. for being a member. That's normal. You're a very valuable and awesome member. Thank you very much. I think we share the same values, so. That's yeah. the, is, is that your main reason for joining? For uh... um, First, I was curious. And my first reason for joining was I don't want to be out of it. So I should be in. Okay. That's, and, uh, that's funny. <laughs> and after I got to know you better through your newsletter, mainly, and then I follow you on social media, but I really take a good time to read the newsletter that I like. And then we met in Amsterdam mm. and it was great. And I felt all the spirit of the energy and you guys are all very young and full of great ideas. And I'm like, these guys are going to change the world. So let's be part of it. Mm. It feels just like normal. It's the place to be. Do you have other international partners that you would... Uh or associations or whatever, or non-profit organizations. No, we don't have any other non-profit organizations. It's okay, we're poly, you know, poly associationists. No, <laughs> I mean, I have my favorite brands for some products, but uh, I don't have any economical relationship with any of them. Mm. We like also to be, to be free, okay. so we have no sponsor, no nothing. Mm. But if there is a brand that I like, I will talk about it on, on YouTube, and I, I don't get paid for it, it's just because I... Because you like it's it. good products and I want to yeah. recommend it. You told me you wanted to start a national organization in France. Uh, can you tell me a little bit more about it? And do you have... A national organization? Yeah, if, or of hy sustainable hydroponic farmers. Yeah, no, that was an idea I had last year. Yeah. But uh, I'm not going to do it, so... <laughs> <laughs> I don't have time to do it. I just, I just wanted to do an association for people that are doing the same thing as we do so we can share best practices mm -hmm. and ideas and tools and everything. But most of the people that do this are doing this because they were our former students. So what I should do is just a platform, online platform, so everyone can connect them. Because mm. we're in the center, but it's not interesting. You, you know, people, they send us, oh, I, I built this, I did that. But the biggest thing would be to share to everyone. Do you see what, what do you see special, you know, partnerships and cooperating and exchanging knowledge? What kind of specific value do you see in that? Uh, I think well, one company cannot uh, figure it out all 
out. So you need to partner with some other people. And I think we should do that more because we can't think of everything. And sometimes we run tests that other people have run before and it's a waste of time. Mm. So I think uh, we have everything to gain by cooperating. But the problem is that everyone is in a very uh, in independent way of doing things and uh, mm. have their own interest. And you have just have to find a company that has an interest in working with you and you have an interest and that that's the only way you can do it. Mm. But the problem is that now we have the small farmers and you have the huge company and the small farmers, they don't have much to give to the huge companies. And the huge companies, they have, you know, they have laboratories, they have data, they have many things that these can use. So it's a bit unfair. Mm. Do you see, do you know how we can, could address that or how we could... Uh no, I don't. <laughs> hmm, okay. I'll think about it. <laughs> what is the special organization structure you have? Do you have a special one or just a company? It's an agricultural company. So in France, uh, when you sell vegetables, it needs to go through the Chamber of Agriculture. And it depends on the space that you use, the land. And because we're so small, I'm the only one to be authorized to work there. Mm. And I have no social security, no... How do you say when you're old? And you pension. Work. No pension and nothing. And we pay. We still pay. So it's a bullshit structure. But agricultural structure are always bullshit. Mm -hmm. And Nicolas is not allowed to work with me. So this is why we built another company, which is a, a professional training program, mm -hmm. a training company. And because the greenhouse is his tool now, he's allowed to be in the greenhouse. So if we have <laughs> some control, he just drop the and be like... I mean, my tool. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so it's like, uh, in France, it's not ideal to... Uh, it's not ideal. Micro farming is not ideal. And hydroponic is not ideal. And if there is something we could do about it is, first, recognize that in a small superficie, you can make a living out of it. And recognize that's real work. And so someone can work there, pay, and get social security, security. and all the normal stuff. Mm. And uh, and also maybe think about an organic label for hydroponic culture. That would be nice. Or mm. a label that recognizes that you don't put any chemical products because when you have to sell them, you have to put the same price as someone that puts many, many chemical shit on it. You already touched it a little bit. Did you encounter other special laws in France about doing agriculture and doing... Mm. No, because... I know you can't do agriculture in a city. Is that what you want me to talk about? Yeah. When you do agriculture, when you ask for your number of company, you have to specify the piece of land that you will be working in. And this piece of land has a special number and it's registered in the records of the lands of France. But if you want to do urban agriculture, you don't have this specific number because the, the land is not divided for agricultural purpose. So you can't really have an agricultural company. But you need to have this if you want to sell your vegetables. Mm. So nowadays it's a little bit inflexible and I don't know how this is going to be resolved. I hope it, I think it's going to be resolved very soon because Paris's chairman uh, is really into putting the city greener and everything. Mm. So I hope she will help and uh, find a way. It's just a matter of... Uh, and do you papers. know about other countries and other laws, you know? Mm. Yeah. Don't I don't even way. really know the law here, so I don't know in <laughs> other countries. Okay, but you're a normal farmer, so... I'm a normal officially, farmer. Officially, you're a normal For farmer. For me, it's okay. For you, it's okay. <laughs> All right, last question for All the right. day. A very important one. What do you think you can teach aspiring vertical farmers? How, what do I think can be inspiring for other farmers? No, what do you think you can teach aspiring vertical farmers? People who want to start vertical farming. We're good on the technical part of how to manage your plants in a day-to-day -day base. Mm. This is our experience and how to manage your greenhouse and how to make a living out of it, how to make it profitable and how to enjoy the whole thing and not just the product, but maybe change the product into something else more valuable. Uh, use this thing you know and sell your knowledge via this and yeah. how to make a living out of it. For that, you just need experience and to be creative. And Les sorciers. So, yeah. yeah. Les sorciers. Yeah. If you like it, subscribe. <laughs> <laughs> you have to look into the camera, like, very serious. <laughs> <laughs> you want me to look at the camera and say, if you like it, subscribe. <laughs> that was very like... <laughs> <laughs>
<laughs> it's a good one. Sorry about it. Sorry. Sorry. Thank you, Mario, for this interview. You're very welcome, Jeff. You will change a lot of lives, I'm very sure of it. I, I'm sure not. I'm sure the life changed themselves. But well, it can be you a inspired to change. Of inspiration. I don't know. Just, just go for it. Mm. But, well, there's something I want to add. When we arrived in France, you know, French people, I, I did my thesis about uh, French people versus American people and how they behave in different situations. And the French people way of doing things is they don't like risks. Okay, so they spend a huge amount of time and sometimes money to evaluate the risk before doing anything. You know, they're like, oh, uh, maybe I shouldn't do this because of that. Let's calculate it. And when in the end they do something, 10 people have done it before them. And, uh, and you know, in the American and Argentinian way of doing it, it's like, just go for it. You do it, and then you think of what you shouldn't have done. And then you change those things. But you're already a step ahead, like 10 steps ahead from the French guy. So when we arrived here, we were like, should we do it the French way or the Argentine way? And obviously we did the Argentine way. <laughs> and, and it was great because it was not supposed to work. Everything that we'd done, if you follow the books, it was not supposed to work. And we just did it how we felt it would be good, good and, and it worked. So just follow your instincts and just do it. Okay. Like this guy, Sasha Baron Cohen. Just do it! <laughs> Good end of the video. Thank, Thank you, you very, very much, much. Jeff from IVF. <laughs> Thank you very much, Marion from Les Sourcils. Thank you very much for watching. <laughs>